Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. You're listening to Cup of Parenting podcast and I'm your host Aisha, a pediatric speech and language therapist, mom of seven and parenting coach here in the UK. So this week I'm joined by Dr. Ayad Bashir and she is an academic clinical fellow in diabetes, mashallah, and works in hospitals across the northeast of England. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Dr. Ayat, and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How are you and how are you doing? So Ayat's one of my old friends, alhamdulillah, so I have known her for quite a while. How is everything going with you, Ayat? Alhamdulillah, it's, it's, been, it's been very strange times, but you know, this year, or 2020 and 2021, my life's kind of changed considerably. Yeah, subhanallah. Um, subhanallah, yeah. Um, so alhamdulillah, Allah blessed with me with a, with a daughter. She's now nearly eight months. Um, alhamdulillah, and it's been, you know, the, you know the, biggest, the biggest challenge, the biggest blessing, but also biggest, the biggest challenge. <laughs> oh, subhanallah. Yeah, so to our listeners, me and Sister Ayat, mashallah, had, had baby girls on the same day. So they were our twins, alhamdulillah. Um, and they were both born on Eid day, weren't they, Ayat? Yeah, so, Eid babies. Um, <laughs> so it's Ayat's first daughter. So yeah, subhanallah, how do you feel like your life's changed, Ayat, since you've had your daughter? She's your first one. How has motherhood been for you? I think for me personally, because I was always so career driven, you know, life was all about, you know, getting to the next stage, you know, working really hard. And that was sort of my priority. And apart from, you know, obviously, you know, uh, the, you know, Islamic lessons, classes, all of that. But now, you know, I've got this this new priority and this, this kind of uh, human mm-hmm. being that's completely reliant on me. Um, yes. which is such a strange feeling but you know it, it's it's such a blessing but you know yeah it just means that you know my life is not all about me anymore it's about it's about her and her journey and you know how best to to kind of uh, bring her up and yeah so it's c- completely changed my completely changed my view on life Mm-hmm. Mashallah. So if you can just take you back, Ayat. So subhanAllah, you've been involved in the masjid as well as obviously, like you said, advancing academically very excellently, alhamdulillah. So if you just take you back, you, your mom's subhanAllah, one of the teachers in our madrasa as well and teaches Quran and you were also one of our teachers and you also helped me with teaching the ladies in the Saturday class. So you're very, very involved in the Masjid Alhamdulillah. But at the same time, you know, you've become a doctor. And I know when you were younger, you did particularly well in your exams. And I think you scored 99% in your Arabic exam at the same time, excelled in your GCSE. So how did you manage to, do you feel do you managed to balance, you know, your your the inside of your education and the dunya side of your education. Is there anything in particular that you felt helped you? I think so. So we, we I went to Arabic schools. Um, so uh, since since the age of four, um, mm-hmm. and 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 you know everyone kept saying to to my parents, it's crazy that you're sending your child to two schools. They're going to be really tired. But but actually, the the Arabic school and Islamic studies, memorizing the Quran that kind of helped excel me excel in my the studies at English school mm. um, because number one you know the Islamic studies and the Quran itself gives you the guidance it gives you the it gives you the strength it gives you the motivation because we're always taught to try and excel in whatever we can whatever we do and we're taught that Islamically so it, me- it meant that you know I had that kind of motivation to to in, in English school to try and you know be the best as I can and at the same time you know the Islamic studies uh, tell you to kind of respect your parents and all you know your all important lessons in life so mm-hmm. you know, once you've got that as a foundation it means that everything else that you do is uh, it, it has it has meaning and it has purpose um, yeah so, alhamdulillah and especially um, memorizing Quran and actually has um, a blessing itself it helps you if you're, if you're able to memorize Quran Mem- mm-hmm. memorizing anything else becomes uh becomes easier because subhanallah yeah subhanallah, yeah of course. something uh so it's yeah so it's a, a blessing in itself um so yeah so I, I felt that the arabic studies or in the islamic studies complemented uh my english studies and it didn't hinder it at all actually it didn't you know i, I never felt that i kind of was struggling with time mm-hmm. subhanallah i think it put you know 
le memorizing a living Quran and all these Islamic studies put barakah in your time. So it makes it makes you use your time more wisely uh, without you even noticing it sometimes. Mm. Um, so yeah, so you know, I never felt that I was doing two different things. I felt that it was all kind of part of complemented each yeah, other. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So what advice would you give to any sort of fellow mom out there, Ayat, who's probably, you know, maybe got children out there who are trying to study academically, but also keep up the deen side of things, which can become tricky for children, especially the ones living in the West yeah. um, or even elsewhere in the world, to be honest. Is there any advice you can give to those parents about keeping that balance with the children? Because like you said, you found it incredibly useful and almost as if it came naturally and easy to you. Yeah, yeah. So I think my first advice is for parents not to be put off uh, by, you know, thinking that it's going to be too much for their kids in terms of, you know, having to go to school in the morning or being homeschooled and then having to then have extra exam exam mm. classes, not to be put off by that. Um, children are incredibly resilient and actually can do uh you know can do both um so that's number one and number two i felt really i felt like i belonged so whenever i went to arabic school i met other children who similar backgrounds they were also muslims and it was really nice to be able to then talk to them about you know because sometimes you know if you go to the to, to english schools it's not sometimes it's easy to find people yeah. who you know, have the same background as you uh, and follow the same religion so it's really nice for them to be able to see people, uh, to different children who are also Muslims. And, you know, that feeling of belonging can really, yes, really, yes. really important. Even if it's not that they go to specific Islamic classes, but if they go to uh, Islamic events, I remember we used to go into to Ramadan in the mosque. There used to be like kids' activities in the back room. Mm. And just seeing, you know, seeing other Muslims and other Muslim children, it just, I felt like, I, you know, I finally belonged somewhere. Uh, and it didn't really it, sometimes it didn't matter that after that if there weren't any Muslim children in my class because I knew that I was going to see them in Arabic school so that was that was it so from a socialization perspective it's, mm. it's really important and then if you kind of tell your kids that you know memorizing the Quran and reading the Quran and, and, and learning it and following uh following what the Quran teaches um if it, it's going to help you in life it's going to help you excel in your studies it's going to help you if you if you tell them it that way it makes you know there's there's it, it makes it more appealing um so there's kind of three dimensions to it you know that's mm. what that's how i see it yeah um, but but most importantly because a lot of people you know they used to criticize my parents to say why are you doing this to your kids subhanallah yeah because yeah. it's like almost um in, in today's society that you go you find people who go through one route or the other and maybe abandon you know um allowing their children to get one side of the education at the expense of the other because like you said they may be thinking it's too much of a burden or it's not yeah. needed I mean in your opinion do you think it is needed do you think children should have a balance of you know the Islamic education as well as pursuing um, a career outside of Islam in the dunya yeah uh, it's I think it's it's so important it is really needed uh, because you know Islam is our way of life um, yeah. so if you if you lose that then no matter what you're doing, no matter how much you excel academically, otherwise, if you become a, you know the world's best scientist, if you don't have kind of a meaning to your life and purpose and something to work for, to in terms of your uh, the hereafter, it's 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 going to be, you know, there's no point. Uh, so you're just kind of working for your dunya, and that's it. It's going to end one day, and that's it. Um, mm -hmm. But then if they, if they've got that guarantee that you know they've learned all about, all about their religion and they follow. Uh, what their you know the religion is taught, then then they're, they're at least they you know they're guaranteeing both the the, the this life and the, the next life. Um, so uh, I think it, that's the only way in the especially in the West. And to be honest, mm -hmm. you know even in you know the Middle Eastern countries, Arab countries, yeah, absolutely, yeah. They're, yeah, they're struggling. They're struggling because although they get you know access to Islamic lessons here and there, I, I feel like we're we're we, we're more privileged because you know. Yes. Yes. Where the, the, the kids actually go to the masjid and they know why they're doing this because they need to have these lessons for their for you know for their akhirah and for their you know to get to paradise but you know the kids in the middle east sometimes they just feel like 
it's just integrated in their education anyways and it might not they might not be able to differentiate why they need to learn yeah totally no no I totally agree with you I've seen that as well with my own eyes it's as if like the children here when they go there they've gone out of their way to enroll in exactly. something yeah. and to seek yeah. out that knowledge especially and it's not you know readily around them they're not submerged in it but actually because they've chosen to do that and those parents have chosen to put them in that environment in extra islamic classes or extra islamic activities or with extra people you know in, in, in that are similar to them um that that that's much more profound and has a much more better impact on yeah. them on love. so in, if we can come towards the fact that I know because you're a doctor now, I'm going to ask you a health question. So, you know, yeah. especially during this COVID and this lockdown, a lot of people have been affected, you know, especially mentally yeah. because of being locked down. As a doctor, is there any sort of clinical advice or one piece of health advice that you can maybe share to our listeners out there that could maybe support them, especially in the, during this time? Yeah, it's, it's been a, a really difficult time. And I think, Mental health is one of the biggest things that's been affected. And there could be several reasons for that. One is for lack of socialization, lack of seeing people, lack of doing, you know, the activities that you were, all, were doing previously. And the other thing is the lifestyle habits that you, that ha- that kind of happen when you're in lockdown, mm. kind of have an effect, you know, kind of have an effect on your mental health as well. So from a socialization perspective, obviously it's really difficult. We, we can't go out to see people um as we did in the past a lot of people now are doing things online so it's it's really useful sometimes to be able to kind of if you if you've got a group of friends to have a catch-up over zoom or over any kind of you know online platform or Mm -hmm. you know making sure that you've got regular contact with people by the phone it's really important for people to 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 if you know if you haven't heard from someone for a while to pick up that phone and give them a you know have have a chat because that Mm -hmm. person might be completely lost and completely alone but if they if they know that someone else is thinking about them it has a really positive impact on their mental health yes um, yes so so yeah so if you haven't heard from someone in, in in months then just pick up that phone and ring them and how are you feeling how are you doing is anything that we can do to help and and, and using you know the, the online platforms can can sometimes help people um now what what a big piece of advice for me is 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 diet and uh, and exercise it has a, a really tremendous impact on your physical and mental health. Mm, so, subhanallah, like, yeah. In lockdown, people aren't exercising as much. So even, you know, for example, my brothers, what they've done is they've set up a, in the living room, they've, you know, they've made this makeshift kind of like gym. They have got no equipment, but... It's oh, mashallah. <laughs> yeah, they, like they do like an exercise circuit every day. Um, and that occupies nearly an hour of their day and it's a change in their routine. Uh, and they're both working and, and that's kind of, that's keeping them kind of, physically and mentally healthy so you know they just kind of do it do a little circuit and then kind of healthy foods because it's just you know it's really easy to then kind of eat unhealthily yes um, yes that's a that's a big concern isn't it in today's sort of society yeah Um, so just healthy readily available yeah yeah healthy eating and it's just kind of encouraging the family to, to, to sit down together uh as much as possible to have a meal together we're actually sometimes blessed in a, in a way that we're in lockdown because we're getting time to spend with our families yeah absolutely because you've been forced you've been forced to get there and maybe you might not have <laughs> it's the first time in, in in a while that we've actually kind of managed to all be at the same place at the same time and have mm. dinner and be able to have lunch uh in this kind of like preparing lunch together it's, just, it's, it's completely new but yeah preparing healthy and exercising those two things can have a big impact and because the vitamins and minerals, especially trying to, if you know, we've got the, we're in the middle of a pandemic, uh, and trying to keep your immune system working as best as possible is the best thing. So, and and I'm a big fan of vitamin D. It's really important because we're not seeing the sun mm. going outside. Uh, yeah. It's really important to be able to get vitamin D from any other source, milk, uh, yogurts, or uh, supplements. So that's it. those. Those are my big things for. Oh, subhanAllah, lots of lots of key pieces of advice there, subhanAllah. Jazakallahu khairan, Dr. Ayat, thank you so much for taking time out to give us such valuable advice and to share your opinion and your journey on motherhood as well, inshallah.